Hello grade 10s, in this video we'll be going over mechanical energy, the principle of conservation of mechanical energy, a past paper exam question. Let's jump right in, but if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please make sure to do so now. So my question says that we've got a 2 kilogram ball, so they've given me the mass, rolls from rest. Very, very important when you read your question, you need to look for very, very specific keywords. So here they give me the mass of the ball. And then they say rolls from rest. When you see that keyword, you know that the initial velocity or the velocity in this case at point A is equal to zero. And they tell me that the track is frictionless, A, B, C, D. It's very important that it is frictionless. We need to work with isolated systems in this section. And it says that horizontal section B, C of the track is five centimeters above the ground. So B and C are on the same horizontal level. And this is the height above the ground, my zero position. And then they say the ball reaches point D up here, 30 centimeters above the ground. And they give me a speed at which the ball reaches point D. So we have the velocity at D as well, 1,71 meters per second along the track. First question is related to a definition that you need to know. Write down one term for the following statement, the sum of gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. You should know that that is mechanical energy. And in your exams, they can ask it backwards. So they can say, give the definition or define the term mechanical energy. And then you need to say this. They then follow up that question by asking us to calculate the mechanical energy at point D. Now, as we said, mechanical energy is the sum of potential energy and kinetic energy over there. Now, they do actually, in this particular question, give me a different uh, formula for mechanical energy. So we can, instead of writing E mech, we can say E m is equal to E p plus E k. You must always write your formulas down as I give it to you on the formula sheet. And some schools, instead of saying E k, you say k. And instead of saying E p, you say u. Okay. Then they also give you the formula for E p and the formula for E k. So I'm going to expand my formula now. So instead of EP, I'm writing MGH. Instead of EK, I'm writing half mass times velocity squared. I've basically just expanded each part of my formula. Then we're going to substitute. Now, remember, they told me the mass of the ball. It's two kilograms. In physics, my mass must always be in kilograms. So we can substitute that in. It's two. Gravitational acceleration is 9.8. And they went it at point D. Now, at point D, we are at a height of 30 centimeters above the ground. We need that to be converted into meters. There are 100 centimeters in one meter. So basically I divide 30 by 100 and we're going to get 0, 0,3 meters. Then that is the potential energy. That's um, this over here, this product. And then we can work out the kinetic energy. The mass again is 2 kilograms. My velocity at point D was, remember, given to me in the question. Velocity, speed, essentially the same thing over here. So 1,71. Please don't forget to square it. A very common mistake that I see as a teacher is that people forget to square velocity. And my answer over there is 8, comma, my calculator says 8041. You may round that off to two decimals if you want. So it's 8,80 if you want. And remember your unit energy is measured in joules. Now, what's important about what we just calculated is the fact that we now have the mechanical energy of the system. What that means is at point D, the mechanical energy is 8,80 joules. At point C and at point B, the mechanical energy, E mechanical, is 8.80 joules. And same at A. Remember, the mechanical energy at all points along this track it's an isolated system, no friction will be the same. That's because of the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. My next question wants me to calculate the initial height of the ball at point A. Now, what a lot of my students will do, and I've seen this before, is they say, okay, height, that features in this formula, the formula for potential energy. So they'll say EP equals MGH. The problem is, okay, fine, we're looking for height, that's my unknown. G is 9.8, mass is 0 0.2, but do we know the potential energy at A? The potential energy at A? No. So there's two unknowns. We can't just use this formula. What we'll have to do, even though the question doesn't say to use it, 
we will need to use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. And remember what that is, is the mechanical energy at one point is equal to the mechanical energy at another point. So because we already know the mechanical energy at D, we just worked it out, it's 8.80 joules, and we need to work up the height at A. We know that the mechanical energy at A and D will be the same, so we use the following formula. The mechanical energy at A is equal to the mechanical energy at D. Now, remember, how do we calculate mechanical energy? Well, we do potential plus kinetic. So we're going to do potential energy at A. Now, instead of writing EP plus EK is equal to EP plus EK, you can definitely do that. But we know that potential energy is MGH. And we know that kinetic energy is half m v squared so i'm just going to skip to that step right then do i need to write m g h plus half m v squared for d do i need to calculate the mechanical energy at d do i need to substitute into these variables no because i already know the mechanical energy at d i calculated already so instead i'm just going to leave this as E mechanical at D and I'm going to substitute that 8.80 value in here in a second. So as I said we know the mechanical energy at D is 8.80 then we can fill in all of these values for A. Remember mechanical energy is potential energy at A plus kinetic energy at A. So the potential energy at A the mass is 2, G is 9.8 and I don't know the height at A. That is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to leave that as height at A. Then think about this very, very carefully. They do tell me, and we wrote it down over here already, that the ball rolls from rest at A. That means that velocity is zero at A. And if velocity is zero, this entire term over here will be zero. So we can substitute in a plus zero. You may also substitute it in like this, so showing me that the speed is zero, but ultimately if velocity or speed is zero, this whole term is going to be zero. So therefore when we solve for HA, what we do is we multiply these two numbers together, and then to get height at A alone, I say 8.80 divided by 19.6, and we get a height at 0, 0,4489 and so on. You may round that off to two decimal places, 0, 0,45 meters. So where do you get your marks? A formula, substituting everything incorrectly, and an answer with a unit. My next question wants the speed, V, of the ball while it moves between B and C. Remember, because B and C are at the same vertical height above the ground, the, 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 um, well, the mechanical energy is definitely the same at all points, but the gravitational potential energy is also the same for B and C. So... It doesn't matter whether you choose B and C. So we're going to go E mechanical, let's do B, at B. And then you pick a point where we also know our information. I'm going to pick D again because we already know the mechanical energy at D and we know that that's going to equal to the mechanical energy at B. Again, I'm going to expand E mechanical for B. So mechanical energy is potential plus kinetic, but I'm not doing it for D because I already worked out the mechanical energy at D is 8,80. We know that the mass is 2, G is 9.8. The height at B or C, whichever point you decided to use here, is 5 centimeters. Remember, you need to convert that to meters. You need to divide that by 100. It's 0 0.05. And then I'm going to run out of space. So let me just move this up. Then my mass again is two and I'm looking for the velocity, the speed at B. Remember, don't forget the little square over there. So how we solve for this, don't make math errors. How we solve for this is multiply all of these together. And then I also did half of two, which is one. So there's a one over there. Then to get VB squared alone, you say 8,80 minus this over here. You get 7.82, but remember this is squared. The opposite of square is square root. So you need to square root 7.82, and therefore your velocity at B. Round it off to two decimal places, because my calculator gives it to me like this. Sorry, that's a 9. 2,796, da, 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 da. Round it off to two decimal places, 2,80 meters per second. Because they want speed, speed is a scalar. We don't need to give a direction. That's my final answer.
I hope that that was helpful. I hope to see you in another video very soon. Bye everyone.